Hello guys, this is Andy from Big Mac um, Paint Shop, uh, Workshop even, and I am today putting together a World Eater Mole Fiend. I'm doing it in a good old fashioned corn heat red, and I'm starting off with um, preparing the model. I put it together with sub assembly, and I put mask on, which is a sort of a list um, <coughs> in the joint, which is a silicon. And what that does is uh, when you're using the airbrush or spray cans, it uh, protects the joint sections, allowing you to get a decent seal with your glue. Uh, so the model doesn't fall apart so easily. So starting off uh, with uh, Vallejo's black primer, a uh, couple of good coats on it just to make sure it's um, going to have a nice uh, sealed finish uh, even over the silicon. It doesn't matter because like I say that silicon is going to just stay there and protect the figure itself. So the prime, uh, with the prime done the base coat is Vallejo's red primer. I love this colour, it um, works really well for any um, deep reds you want to work with as a uh, good quality base and we can also take it up really high if you're wanting sort of like the um, classic Blood Angels which is more of an orange colour. So I use this, a good quality finish on the uh, fig, making sure that every bit of it is red. So um, on, the, uh, on the flesh work I decided I want to do something a bit different on the uh, demon flesh. So I started off with a pale dark uh, blue grey, uh, again another Vallejo colour. So I went for something a little bit more um, brighter uh, but, uh, to match the, to really contrast against the uh, deep red colour. And I, I just uh, bring that along, all the um, second areas, uh, all the other sort of flesh like areas uh, across the figure. Uh, the next shade over the top uh, was a Carrack Stone. Now, it might seem like a bit of a weird one, but it, what, it, uh, what it did, it added, applied a sort of a, a slightly sort of skin coloured filter over the top. So when I started adding all the highlights into it, it uh, really made for an interesting looking um, flesh. Once I've got that in, I then added some Burnt Umber, 50-50 uh, mix of Burnt Umber and Panzer Dark Grey. Again, another uh, Vallejo set. Uh, and I uh, applied this into the uh, recesses between the muscles and uh, around the uh, mechanical areas where where you would where you would expect sort of um, more shade to go and bring, bringing it together in a sort of more natural manner so back onto the armor plating I am now adding some early highlights to the armor uh, which is again I'm going over a second coat with the uh, red primer just to, um, to brighten it up a touch and on top of that there's just a little bit of the layer of dark red in there. I'm, I'm keeping it dark but I'm also adding some uh, colour depth but I don't want to do too, too much at this stage because there's a lot of uh, flesh work to go. So back to the flesh. I am now using um, another layer colour, Sky Grey, uh, as a general highlight. Um, with the airbrush over the top of all the flesh work. Now, sorry about the angle on this one, uh, it was very difficult for me to get uh, a better angle on this because obviously I had to paint the thicker. Uh, we, are, we have worked on it and we've got a, a better system now, so hopefully my next videos will be much better. So, after the Sky Grazer had a chance to dry, I go for a, a located wash, uh, although it's still um, fairly general. Uh, with Seraphim Sepia. Uh, more focused towards the muscles and uh, muscle edges and that, uh, and also any of the um, more brown areas. Uh, but I also um, use a bit of water just to thin it out around the uh, upper reaches so it does blend in nicely. The next highlight is a 50 50 mix of Sky Grey and Off White. Uh, it's very, it's much nicer to use off-white colours uh, rather than straight white. Uh, it gives you a bit more breathing room and makes them look less pastely. Now I just kept this towards the uh, upper uh, reaches of the muscles, what, a bit more exposed to the sunlight, uh, allowing uh, to get them nice highlights. What you'd expect to see on the uh, on the muscle structure. Now you can at this point you can go up with a, a paintbrush using. 
uh, just some pure on, off white if you really wanted to or mix it with a bit of the uh, brown just to uh, throw some more depth into it but um, I left it at this stage thinking that it was um, at the, at the colour I wanted it. So kind of unusual sort of pasty grey colour made, made it quite an interesting colour uh, going against the red. Now I started in a bit more um, shading to the recessed areas which is a very thin mix of Lamia and uh, medium and uh, Seraphim Sepia and get, get plenty on there um, as, I, as I'm using the Lamia but allowing it to really soak in towards the um, deeper recesses and just to add a final bit of depth to the figure. As you can see here um, I'm just pulling the uh, wash off of the uh, muscle tones right into the creases really working that um, then depth and now I'm using a touch of uh, strong tone and red uh, just to make the um, areas around the mechanical sections look a bit more bruised uh, I also added some blue to it as well uh, at a later date just to make it look a bit more bruised and where the uh, flesh work is joined to the uh, mechanical structures uh, really making the uh, look a bit sore, a bit more um, like it's been grafted together uh, rather than as if it sh should be stuck together as it is. So now I'm going back over the uh, armour plating just to uh, add some more uh, colour to it. Um, I'm being very careful at this point because obviously I've got to uh, tidy up the armour plates on um, some of the other areas uh, where the uh, overspray from the from the whites and the greys. Now this is uh, the red prime again. I've added some um, burnt umber shading to the uh, lower regions of the um, of the plating. So and now I'm bringing up bring it up with. Uh, Baleo Dark Red um, as an all over highlight, trying to just take away some of the greasiness what the Burnt Umber brings, allowing it uh, to uh, really pop as a, a blended highlight. It looks really well together, these two colours. The next shade is uh, um, Baleo's Bright Red. These are uh, 103 and 102. Uh, they don't actually have a separate name, they're just reds. Well, this is a much brighter red. I uh, kept this as a, uh, an actual highlight colour. Uh, really brings out the, um, the uh, rich red tones of the, uh, of the prime. And uh, just takes away that last bit of um, brown from the burnt umber. And pushing it towards more raised areas, what, what will stand out. As you can imagine, uh, along the, uh, the centre spine, uh, region uh, took a, a bit more care towards that, and also towards the centre of the eye of Horus. Things what would work, what, what are there, what should attract the eye. So now uh, the trim which is uh, all too prevalent, prevalent amongst um, Chaos Vehicles. It's painted with liquid copper, which is a Vileo um, metal, liquid metal. And if you're using this, you need to use uh, surgical spirits to clean your brush. And trust me, um, don't let it go anywhere near your mouth. It's horrible and probably do a mischief if you're unlucky and take too much in. Uh, this will do your brush in, but it gives a really smooth coat. Uh, so, uh, make sure you use a, um, a brush what's not great. I've uh, done the same again with um, on the silver work, but using below liquid silver. It's such a bright silver though, um, but it looks, when it's dry, it looks really, really painted on, for want of a better term. So you have to be very um, careful with it. Now make sure that you get plenty of washes onto it to uh, bring that shininess down so it looks more um, tarnished and more real. 
Yeah, I've got, um, so which is why we're, uh, I'm using Norn Oil first over the um, uh, metal areas. Uh, more focused on the silver work, but I also do a bit of the, uh, on the copper. Um, Norn Oil is a real good one for fixing the problem of uh, the silver work being too bright. Uh, it doesn't so much. It's not so much of a problem with the copper as it's such a rich colour. Um, but it is a, a huge problem with the with the silver. So now I'm at a stage where I'm wanting to put the figure together now. So as you can see, I'm using a bit of co an old cocktail stick and just plucking out the bits of um, the mask off around uh, the joints. It comes off dead easy if you uh, if you put plenty in. When you do put the mask off into the figure, make sure you use loads of it. So make it um, it allows it. Uh, it makes it really easy to uh, pull apart at that point. So, models together. I'm just adding some more washes to the um, arm, to the arms and the flesh. I'm adding a little bit of red, just pure red wash, into the um, recesses and the armor, the armor sections on the. Um, In the arms are using what what bronze um, I wanted a sort of a bronzy color but I didn't obviously want to use the same sort of tones as what's on the um, trim as it just would look really weird so I went for a what bronze which is a much deeper color um, I also did it on the segments on the lasher tendrils uh, just to break up the silver because otherwise it just look really really dull So now I'm starting to highlight the. I'm throwing a very thin wash of non oil into the um, trim now. Uh, this was very much a case of uh, three parts water, one part non oil. And just to add some depth to the copper and just, add, just to um, filter around the details. The teeth. I painted up in um, just simple black. I wanted them to look quite alien, really uh, unusual, start and stand out nicely against the very pale flesh tones. Um, and what I did forget to do was highlight it on the uh, video, uh, which was actually done in Eshing Grey and then Dawnstone. Uh, these are good colours for highlighting, uh, highlighting black. The spines and the uh, spikes uh, were painted in Carrack Stone um, just a good coat, nothing fancy um, I felt I wanted to keep them natural looking but a different shade to the armour, to the arms and the flesh uh, these were then washed, all the uh, spikes and that were washed in Agrax Earth Shade uh, to add the uh, colour depth what, um, ar around the spikes and the uh, bottom, bottoms of the, uh, uh, the bone sections. Obviously you've got to be very careful, um, more so on the uh, near the flesh colours because it's such a light colour that the Agrax will stain it. The trim was then highlighted gently with a Brassy Brass, uh, which is a Vallejo colour. Uh, kept it uh, to a simple uh, highlight. Didn't want to take too much away from it. Uh, I wanted it to look more tarnished than anything else. Um, and I'm just uh, working towards the sort of the more eye-catching um, areas. Uh, some of the um, areas were painted, some of the areas were used a dry brush depending on what, what sections I was painting. As you can see I'm using a, a dry brush here on the uh, tendrils which is uh, Vallejo's cr uh, Chrome which adds a nice uh, highlight to the Vallejo liquid metals. Just keeping it gentle, just enough to get rid of the non oil staining. Um, Making it look a bit more, uh, a bit more real. 
But Shabti bone was used as a highlight on top of the uh, spikes. Uh, you can't go wrong with the uh, GW uh, bone colours, they're really good. I really like them. Um, and they uh, work really well with the uh, the other colour palette, with, with the rest of the colour palette I've picked. I'm back with the airbrush again. Yeah, I know you get uh, some of you guys uh, are not airbrush fans, but to be honest, I really enjoy using the airbrush. And this is done with uh, burnt umber. And again, I'm focusing towards the um, the bottom uh, sections of the armor plate. I'm being very, very careful to shield the uh, the white sections, um, as I don't want any overspray or as little as possible. Burnt umber is just that, uh, uh, there to add that little bit of depth to the um, the armor and the uh, um, the trim. Ah, and now I'm just finishing it up with the red prime again, just to take away uh, the greasiness. Um, what the burnt umber added. Add in a few highlights with the uh, red prime, making um, the colour more uniform. So, onto the uh, funnels now. I've uh, using Vallejo's dark blue uh, as a base, just to uh, get a nice breadth of colour across the um, the engine uh, funnels. And then focusing more towards the centre of the uh, sections with Vallejo's Magic Blue, which is a really vibrant colour uh, when put on um, thickly. And it really works well for the uh, OSL sort of uh, pan, what I was going for. I'm also remembering to do the underside of it. There's a pair, there's a few uh, vents underneath uh, which also take the uh, OSL really nicely. Um, so I'm just getting plenty of the colour down there. You can, uh, with this with this sort of OSL, you can uh, it can be quite liberal, uh, quite liberal with it. Um, no need to be too uh, too accurate. I'm now using sky blue, uh, which is a final Vallejo colour, and I'm really bringing out those um, the hot patches um, on the piping and the funnels, um, bringing out that really vibrant sort of a ghostly colour uh, to contrast nicely against the deep rich uh, reds um, what's on the rest of the morphine. This is an absolute blast to do. Um, I've not long since started doing OSL and I really find it enjoyable. Although it's quite a daunting prospect if you spent any time painting a figure, um, putting over, painting over something that's already painted is quite a daunting prospect but once you get it, it, it's really worth it because it just adds that much to it. You don't have to oversell too much. You can. There's no reason to go too much glow on the uh, rest of the armor plating or whatever. Uh, it's not the sort of thing I was looking for. Uh, you see it on uh, some figs. And it'll, uh, credit to them if they want to do that. Not my sort of thing. I like to keep the OSL where the, the heat actually is stop the glowing just spreading too far. So just keep on doing it until you get the look what you're what you're after. And um, once you've got the hot spots in the spaces where you need it or where you want it to be, um, it's very much a personal preference on how um, you want your OSL to look. Well, like I said, I, um, make sure you get um, remember the vents underneath. Um, but that's a it's a nice thing to uh, add to. You get that bit of glow from underneath the uh, body as well. And this could be added on to the base if uh, you really want it to go that far. Uh, obviously glowing down from the, um, the heat of the engine underneath. So we're getting to the end of the video now. Um, so I hope you actually learned something from this uh, or you actually saw something interesting what you wanted to see. This model absolutely amazing to paint. It really worked well with the airbrush um, and as an individual piece 
I fully enjoyed it. Never painted one before, this was a first for me, and I'm glad I did. It was just so much fun. So if you want to see what uh, more of the same, or uh, more of our uh, videos, if you're really, if you're enjoying what we uh, what we do, please feel free to hit uh, like, share with your friends, subscribe to our channel. The more uh, more subscribers, the better. The more videos we can get out there. So thank you for watching. Uh, this is Andy signing off. Take it easy and uh, have a good day. Bye bye.